Today is Saturday. It's January the 7th, 2023. My joy to come to you with today's Heart of a Shepherd devotion. The title, The Tower of Babel and One Big Unhappy Family. Now, our scripture reading, Genesis chapter 10 and Genesis chapter 11. A little bit of a background to begin. Now, we've already established how God set forth his covenant with Noah, his three sons, and their wives. And in Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1, he commanded them after the great flood, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And so we learn from the scriptures that mankind has a common ancestry that can be traced to three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, Genesis 10 recorded the origin of the races and nations of the world and listed the descendants of Noah's three sons. Now, we have in Genesis 10 then the genealogy of Japheth, Ham, and Shem. The genealogy of Shem is repeated and furthered in Genesis chapter 11. And you'll notice that it continues to Terah, the father of Abraham, who was the father of Israel, the father of the Jewish Hebrew people. Now, let's look at Genesis 10, and I always invite you to open your Bible and follow with me as we go through this. Now, in Genesis 10, God began to deal with the Hebrew people through Shem's lineage. Now, but we're reminded in Genesis 10, although the focus of the Old Testament will be mainly on God's dealings with the Hebrews, nevertheless, the Lord never forsook mankind. And so in Genesis chapter 10, we're given the names of 16 sons who were born to the three sons of Noah, and perhaps now, don't forget, as many daughters. Well, time and space do not allow a detailed study of each name, but a close examination of Genesis 10 will will reveal a historical registry of 70 nations that emerged from Noah's sons. Now, you're going to notice in chapter 10, verses 2 through 5, 14 nations associated with Japheth. And then chapter 10, verses 25 through 27, 30 nations that are linked to Ham and his sons. And then 26 from Shem in verses 21 through 31. Now let's look briefly just at the lineage of Japheth, for instance. Genesis 10, verses 2 through 5. Now Japheth was Noah's eldest son. He was the father of many Gentile nations. In fact, his progeny uh, came from his progeny, came some of the greatest empires of human history. Persia, Greece, Rome can all be traced to Japheth's bloodline. In fact, modern European nations, Germany, Russia, Italy, France, Spain, and the English all trace their origin to Japheth. And then look at verses 25 through 27. Here we have then the lineage of of um, Ham. Now, in Genesis 9:25, Noah cursed Ham and his youngest son, and called him Canaan. Now, that was the name of Ham's grandson. Now, Ham's descendants founded some of the great empires of the ancient world. From his lineage came the Egyptians, the Hittites, the Sumerians, the Canaanites, the Phoenicians, all the tribes of Africa, all face uh, trace their lineage to Ham. Now, by the way, the Eastern Asian and the American Indian are still debated as to their descendants. Did they descend from Ham or did they descend from Japheth? Now, although, verses 25 through 27 of Genesis 9, although Ham was cursed to be a servant of servants, the accomplishments of his posterity was so vast, it appears they set their minds to cast off the curse, being servants of servants. In fact, we have in uh, Genesis 10, 8 through 10, Nimrod. Now, who was he? Nimrod was the grandson of Ham, the son of Cush. He actually became the first king or the first ruler after the flood. He's described in verse 9 of Genesis 10 as a mighty hunter. And really, that could be indicative of being a mighty, powerful warrior, a great leader. Well, he founded Babel, or Babel, as some would say, but Babel, in the land of of Shinar. Now, where's the land of Shinar? It's the great plain in which the great city of Babylon would spring. Now, then notice with me verses 21 through 31 of Genesis 10, for here we have the lineage of Shem. Now, Shem, Noah's second-born son, was the father of all the children of Eber. 
Now, we find that as we look at verse 21. It's believed that the name Eber was the ancient word for the word Hebrew. So Eber and was the father then of the Hebrews, of whom Abraham was later in Genesis 14, 13, he described as Abraham or Abram the Hebrew. Well, and the nomadic tribes and nations of Arabia all would trace their lineage to Shem. So Shem's lineage was the ancestral line through which God fulfilled his promise of a Savior Redeemer, that is, Jesus Christ. Now notice in Genesis 10 that it concluded, leaving no room for doubt that all the nations and people in the world were descended from Noah's three sons. Genesis 10 verse 32, these are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. There is no exception. There is no evolution. Here we have the very seed of human civilization. Well, that brings us to Genesis chapter 11 and the Tower of Babel. Now, the history of man, you understand is one of sin and rebellion. And Genesis 11 demonstrated man's resistance to God's command to, quote, replenish the earth, Genesis 9 and verse 1. Well, rather than disperse or repopulate the earth as God had commanded, the descendants of Noah's sons and their families were determined to continue as one language and one speech, Genesis 11 and verse 1. Well, they congregated, Genesis 11 and verse 2, in a land that would become Babylon, as we've already mentioned, a plain in the land of Shinar, and we read, and they dwelt there. Well, they exerted, in verse 1 of Genesis 11, mankind, the desire to continue as they were. In fact, man resolves, in verse 4, to build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. The sinful pride and the self-sufficiency of man was summed up in an act of rebellion. For we read Genesis 11 of verse 4, man says, Let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So there's man's intent, an act of rebellion against God. Well, let's have some closing thoughts here. We are, Genesis 11 of verse 6 through 8, made privy to a triune council of the Godhead. We read, The Lord said, Genesis 11, verse 6, Behold, the people is one. They have one language. This they begin to do. They begin to build a city and build a tower uh, in pride, saying it will reach into heaven. And, and the Lord says, the Godhead, Nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Well, the Lord, in an act of mercy, and knowing the wickedness of rebellion, a man determined to intervene, lest man be carried so far, there would be no hope of salvation. So in Genesis 11, verse 7 through 8, we, we have this confounding of the languages into multiple languages. And the Lord caused the work of the tower and the city to cease. They were unable to communicate with each other and understand one another. And perhaps it was in frustration. They dispersed. So this act of God forced man to scatter, we read verse 7 and 8, upon the face of the earth. Well, Genesis 11 concludes with a record of Shem's lineage. And it brings our Bible study to a great crossroads in human history. God calling Abraham, Genesis eleven thirty one through Genesis 12 and verse 1, God calls Abraham to leave his country, his kindred, his family, and by faith go unto a land that the Lord would show him. Well, this is a wonderful unfolding of history, but I would remind you that history is his story. It is a testimony of God's sovereignty, his providential leading, and his amazing grace. Thank you for joining me. I hope if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel that you would do so. And if you haven't subscribed to heartofashepherd.com, do it today so that you'll receive every day these ongoing daily studies in God's Word from Genesis to Revelation. God bless you and have a great day. Bye-bye.